Well, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. I just uh, started or at least completed uh, my latest video, the one from Sweden. It's taken a lot of editing and I'm putting it up in the next couple of hours. But I just watched uh, an interesting video by Nigel Danson and he was comparing a APC camera with a full frame camera with a Hasselblad X2D. Now, as you guys well know, I bought a Hasselblad X2D uh, not that long ago, about the end of July, beginning of August, and I'm taking possession of my last lens for the lineup which I want, which is a telephoto lens, which is a 135 with a 1.7 converter, which hopefully will arrive tomorrow, courtesy of DHL. But, um, but the reason for this video is. I don't necessarily agree with what Nigel Danson's findings were uh, because I've got, as you know, the OM1 and a couple of lenses with that. I've also got the X2D and I've done quite a few comparisons between those two cameras. And OK, it's not like for like in terms of what Nigel was um, checking out or at least comparing, but I still believe that the X2D is an incredibly powerful and capable camera. I think a lot of people make the mistake of not printing large enough to take advantage of medium format because a lot of modern sensors in full frame APS-C and in my case micro four thirds cameras on A3, A3 plus, A2 sized prints it's virtually impossible to tell the difference, um, certainly to someone who's a casual observer just looking at the pictures, they would not know the difference. They wouldn't be able to tell you which camera it was taken with. But I really do believe that actually it's the larger prints, and I'm talking four foot plus, five foot, six foot size prints, that the medium format camera shines for. Now, okay, most people never print to that size, so that's a good use case for not actually purchasing a camera with 100 megapixels and the disadvantage of being a medium format camera with limited lens lineup. But that aside, the sheer pleasure of using that camera, um, it makes me get out and want to take pictures because I'm resorting back to basics with that camera. Um, it doesn't have any video capabilities. Yes, it's got image stabilization, so I don't always need a tripod, but it is simply a real joy to use. I appreciate that a lot, not a lot of people can afford to buy a camera like that. And in my case, the only reason I can is I wanted one since they came out, but um, I recently inherited some money and it was my mother who died and she would really be very pleased for me to have exactly what I want or desire in terms of photographic equipment. So in many ways it's partly in memory of her that I'm um, buying these things and it's also as much as anything a case of having to get it out of the system. I'm also making this uh, video or piece to camera on this new DJI Osmo Pocket 3 which I took possession of when was it Friday I think and it's such an improvement over the Pocket 2 I've been using previously. The audio quality, the video quality and the capabilities of it generally. So I've walked outside, I know it's slightly raining but the video uh, quality is amazing. It handles dynamic range far better than the Pocket 2. Unfortunately it's a shame they didn't make it waterproof which means I can't really spend very long outside talking to you but it is a very 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 capable camera. Uh, it's got extended battery life which is good and I'm just walking ambling around the house here so that uh, we can get different lighting conditions so you can see how and what it's doing in terms of um, a videoing device. Having had several video cameras in the past, uh, including the Sony ZV-1, ZV-1-2, this is so much more um, capable, compact and easy to have with you combination. So I'm going to get the X2D out and I'm going to get my OM-1 out and I'm going to take an incredibly boring picture of, and this will be I can spin you around more easily with this camera. I'm going to take a picture of a couple of trees in the garden here, probably with this little fig tree in the foreground. And we'll do some pixel peeping and see if I come to the same conclusions that Mr. Dunson came to. 
Um, I might not because I've had the camera longer than he had his because he had his loan by Hasselblad and I've actually had mine for several months now so I've had more opportunity to use it but um, let's really see how it can do. Watch me get set up and then we'll take the pictures. Right, I've got the, uh, the Hasselblad X2D here and this lens is the 90mm lens which has got a crop factor of 0.8 so 8972 it's the equivalent of a 72mm full frame lens so let's get this mounted on the tripod and what I'll do is I'll focus that on the tree on the fence line in front of me here so now I can use both hands let's spin that round so the tree that's over there the walnut tree is in the frame let's set the um, focus point on the trunk the trunk of the tree is a lot of ivy on which should provide very fine detail which will make it interesting so let's get we need an aperture of about f11 I'm only interested in the bit between the tree and the uh, the fence line being in focus I think that'll be enough depth of field for the purposes we have here I'm going to turn the image stabilization off because I'm on a tripod and I don't really want to have it competing with the tripod. So turn that off. It's focused quite happily. The exposure's right. F11, 0.3 of a second. Let's put a two second timer on so that we don't interfere with what we're doing by moving the tripod at all. And that's focusing. Countdown, two seconds, click. Click, click quick check on the back of the camera and that detail looks impressive to say the least so I'll pop you back onto the mantelpiece and will it recognize me again this little Osmo it doesn't appear to recognize you the second time it says exit but it should I'll just start it again right so face tracking is now enabled again, so that's got me in here. So having got that shot, let's take this camera off and pop that next to you on the mantelpiece carefully. And go and get the OMD, which is over here. Take the lens cap off, I always find that's a useful thing to do. So the OMD's got the 40 to 150 lens on it and we decided that was 72 millimeters which is 36 millimeters on here. So 36 millimeters, the smallest this will go to is 40. So we'll leave it at 40. That's going to be a slightly different framing but not by very much. I'll get that on the tripod, power it on. It should be pointing at the tree in the same way it is and I'll show you what this shot's going to take and I'll turn the image stabilization off as well but this is going to be a high res shot so it's on the tripod so I need to set it to tripod mode which is that option there and I need to set it to 80 uh, megapixels and a raw file which is that so I move the focus point onto the tree like so and to be completely equal we'll have a two second timer two second timer reset the focus point and we're at ISO 80 f8 let's just make that f11 to be a fairer comparison that's compared, take that shot. It's building the composite and I shouldn't touch the camera. Let me do that again. It didn't give me a countdown of two seconds. Um, let me just check, it's got two second timer on. It does have, okay. Set the focus point back onto the tree. Right, it's counting down two, one, now. It's building the composite image because it's in, um, composite image mode I'd say that's a little bit bright I think I might just need to wind the um, exposure compensation down a bit it's obviously a bit bright okay let's take that again 
two second, one second, no seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. That's taken the picture, it's now compositing that, if that's the correct term. And let's go over to the computer and see what those look like. Okay, I'm now in Lightroom. Um, and you'll have my little face in the corner of the frame, unfortunately, while I go through this. And as we can see here, we've got the four pictures I took. I took one with the X2D, and then I took two which were a bit blown out. So I'll get rid of those now so that we're not confusing matters. So that the one on the left is the X2D and the one on the right is the OM1. The OM1's picture is very slightly more yellow. The greens are certainly nicer, which is a finding that Nigel Danson found uh, with the X2D. And if you've seen the other videos I've made, uh, you'll know I really do like the colour science that uh, Hasselblad have brought into play in this camera. So let's start to have a look at these pictures in, in a bit more detail. So let's go into the full size and go into the develop module. We don't need to have that on and we don't need to have that on. So I'll go into reference and actual. Let me drag the image from the OMD to the left side. So on the right here we've got the Hasselblad image, on the left side we've got the OM1's image. The OM1's image is 80 megapixels because I set it into stack mode for 80 megapixels. So it does pixel shifting like the Sony did and like various Olympuses and Panasonics are capable of as well. So the first thing we need to do is go into 100% and have a look at the image on, from the Hasselblad. And I'm going to brighten this up very slightly because it's a little bit difficult to see the shadow detail so just bring this up half a stop and there's 0.5 and we can see right out of the gun if I go up to 200 percent there's a lot of detail in these pictures let me even go up to 400 percent and that is an incredible amount of detail from the Hasselblad with prime lens. So I'm going to make the reference image the OMD's image and I'm going to go back to 100% on that, drag the tree into roughly the right place in the frame as it was before and I will go up to 400% with that and you can immediately see that there is a lot less detail. The details of the veins in the ivy are clearly not really there at this speed or size. Whereas I go back to the Hasselblad's image and at 400% you can very clearly see the veins in the leaves. So that's covered one thing off for a start. The Hasselblad is certainly superior to what Nigel Danson would have compared with his APC size camera. Uh, it's irrespective of the number of pixels it has. I think it's the sensor size that's affecting this mainly. But the, um, the Hasselblad has definitely got a really good image quality there. Now let's look at dynamic range. So let me pull the shadows up a long way on the Hasselblad. And that's a long way. And we're retaining good detail We've blown most of it out, but we, we, we've certainly got a lot of detail in these darker leaves that were in the shadows before. Let's try the same thing with the Olympus. And in fact, what, how much did I up that? that? I upped it to 2.9 exposure, so I better do something pretty similar, otherwise people will say it's not the same thing I'm doing. So I reckon 2.2 because I started with a brighter image anyway. Um, there is pretty good detail actually. I'm surprised the um, the noise is not really there and what I'm seeing is the same lack of clarity that I was seeing when I was looking at the ivy on the trunk. So all in all the little OM1 has done a very good job. I'm very pleased with it but to think you can compare it to a medium format camera directly I think is a little fallacious if that's the correct term for it. The OM1 probably at some point in the future might well be able to produce images as good as a current medium format camera but that's the nature of technology it changes and things improve pretty much all the time so all in all 
the OM1 put a very good show in, but it isn't. It isn't a comparison to um, my Hasselblad when set up correctly in this very uncontrolled um, test that I'm doing. So let's uh, just make that the conclusion, and that's the video. Uh, what I'm possibly going to do in the near future is push both camera systems back out through MPB. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but I use them heavily, and I've never had any issues at all with them, apart from an issue with the drone that they miscalculated on, which is their problem, not mine. Um, I've moved many cameras through MPB, and it's a really safe way, and it's a lot more reassuring to use them than it is to go through eBay. Anyway, that's, uh, that's this video over. I hope you found that interesting. It's non-scientific, so I don't want any comments below about people saying oh it's a real world example or whatever it's not really typical if you were in a studio doing this doing that it would be different of course it would but I can't do a hundred different comparisons using every single genre each camera is capable of so thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next video thank you very much for watching the video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and click the notification icon and the bell and you'll be able to be notified when i upload new videos